Welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I uh, will be making this coral blouse with a top down around your construction with the increases that you cannot see them and the beautiful nice edges. So I hope you join us and uh, you will make this a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful blouse. Let's get started. For the coral blouse, I'm using durable coral. I wasn't uh, so inspired with picking up a name, which is a merchandise cotton yarn in size two, size sport. And uh, that is why we will be using a larger crochet hook, 4.5 millimeter, or use the hook size that you need to uh, meet the gauge and uh, i'm making size extra small and i will start with 99 stitches I do like to make uh, one foundation row in single crochet, so I chained one and then I will work one single crochet in every stitch. If you prefer, you can start with uh, foundation single crochet stitches and this way uh, you won't uh, need to work the stitches first and then the single crochet stitches. I prefer to make this first uh, uh, row in single crochet because it will make it easier not to twist the chain stitches, the, the chain, the foundation chain that we have. And now we will start with the first round, which will be in double crochet. And as a first stitch, I'm using this uh, single crochet stock. So one single crochet on top of the other single crochet and the first round will be an increase round and we will make an increase at every third stitch okay so now the increase and now let's repeat this section so one double crochet into the next Three sti uh, two stitches and one increase into the next and we will repeat this section to the end of the row Now we will close the round with an invisible slip stitch. So we will remove the hook from the working loop and then insert the hook from back to front into that first stitch and then grab the working loop and pass it through that first stitch. Now the second round will be a cross stitch round and I didn't realize it when I first started to work on this, uh, this blouse. So this is the first stitch and I could skip it and work actually a cross stitch at the beginning, but I worked only the double crochet and then I got uh, with one stitch left at the end. So I started around with a double crochet and finish it with a double crochet. And uh, this is because I thought that I will have an uneven number of stitches. So if you have an uneven number of stitches, it's okay to start with one double crochet. But on this round, I had actually, after the increases, I had an even number of stitches. So I could start from the second stitch and then turn into the first stitch and work the other leg of the cross stitch but yeah didn't realize it on the moment so now to work the cross stitch you will need to skip one stitch and work one double crochet into the next 
and then you need to yarn over and turn and work the double crochet into that skipped stitch and we will repeat this uh, cross stitches to the end of the row so skip one stitch work one double crochet into the next and then go back into that skipped stitch and work one double crochet and we will repeat to the end of the row and at the end of the row here's when i realized that i have the last cross stitch and then i had that first stitch which are those two single crochet worked on top of each other and we will need to work there a stitch as well so i could work the stitch as the second leg of the first cross but i didn't realize it on the moment that actually starting with 99 stitches but increasing with 33 will give me an even number of stitches now now we will start um uh, the round the double crochet round uh i i will start it from the second stitch as well because if you're switching and not starting from the same spot you might uh, end up with uh, a nice and straight joining line but you can also start into the first stitch as well and this third round will be only double crochet stitches as i written down at the beginning we will increase at every fifth row so now we have uh, uh, another two rows to work one in double crochet and one in cross stitch let's just finish this row again with the same uh, invisible slip stitch and now we will work the cross i think i will be working the same with that double crochet into the first well two single crochet one on top of each other because this will be the beginning stitch So now after working this stitch, you can actually turn into that first stitch and uh, work the first cross stitch. And we will continue to finish uh, this round and on the next round we will increase again. So now it's our fifth round and we will do another increase round and because on the first increase round we increased at every third stitch this time we will increase at every fourth stitch so one two three and into the fourth we will work two double crochet then again one two three and into the fourth we will work two double crochet and we will continue to increase at every fifth round until we have 12 rounds. And now to finish this increase round, we will work the last section. And because I started into the second stitch, I will have now the last increase into that first 
uh, to single crochet on top of each other. I decided to uh, begin at the double crochet round into the second stitch because I noticed that if you switch in between beginning into the second and into the first, then um, the joining line will be um, straight. So now we will continue. We'll have three more rounds to work and then we will increase again in every fifth stitch and we will work up to round 12. So for this uh, size, I have only three increase uh, rounds and the last two rounds to get to 14 rounds, the number of rounds that I will need for my yoke, we will work them without any uh, without any increase. So after finishing uh, 12 rounds, you will work round 13 and 14 without making any increases. And then the yoke will be done and we will move to the splitting round. So I placed the stitch markers marking uh, 60 stitches for the back and front panel and 39 stitches for the sleeves. And the first section that we will be working from the beginning of the row will be the back panel. So we will start with the same beginning stitch. I'm starting in the um, first stitch this time. If you start in the second stitch, uh, this double crochet round, don't forget after skipping the last sleeve to work that last stitch. So now I will work the first 60 stitches up to the first sleeve. Of course, that depending on the size that you are working, you will work the number of stitches required for the back panel. When uh, I'm getting to the mark stitch, we will chain 14 or the required armpit stitches uh, for your size. And then we will skip the sleeve stitches. So I have 39 stitches to skip. And then we will go into the next one and continue to work with the front panel. When we finish with the front panel, we will chain again 14. And then we will join with the first stitch. Again, if you started the splitting round from the second stitch in the round, here you will have to work the first stitch on top of that first stitch and then join with the first stitch that you worked for this round and now we will continue working on the body now i uh, need to work the um, cross stitch round and uh, you will continue to alternate in between one double crochet round and one cross stitch round until you will get to the desired length I uh, worked in total 27 rounds counting also the splitting round. Now let's work the cross stitches up to the armpit chain and then let's see how to work on top of those chains. You just simply need to continue with the stitch pattern that you have. So now I have one stitch from the back panel and I will skip it and go into the next. And then I will turn and work. No, I didn't have. I just finished with the last cross stitch into the last stitch of the back panel. So I skip one stitch from the armpit chain, 
work the double crochet into the next one and then turn and work the second double crochet of the cross into the skipped stitch and we will continue across this uh, armpit chain if you have an uneven number of stitches on the back panel then you will have one stitch left at the end of the back panel and you'll have to skip that one go into the first chain stitch and then turn and work the second double crochet of the cross into that last skip stitch of the back panel so uh, it doesn't matter how many stitches you have you need to continue with the cross stitch pattern and work it with the stitches that you have and now i will uh, go on top of the front panel and work the stitches and on the second armpit chain we will proceed the same then i close the round with the same invisible slip stitch and now i will continue to work until i will reach the desired length as i said i worked in total 27 rounds counting the splitting round as well but feel free to work as many rounds as desired and now we will finish the body of this blouse with um, an edging i uh, decided on a slip stitch edge but of course you can work as you want so now i will go right into the first stitch after chaining one and i did the first slip stitch and it will be easier to see that first stitch if you're placing a stitch marker because it tends to get smaller and smaller and then we will continue and i think i will only chain one as the first stitch not a slip stitch okay let's close this round again i can do a regular slip stitch now and then just simply chain one i'll go into the next stitch with a slip stitch and then into that chain one i will place the stitch marker and then i will continue to work slip stitches in every stitch if you prefer to make another edging feel free to do so if you want to work the slip stitches edging then i do recommend to keep the stitches looser it will be easier for you to work with them so now i have the the join into that first chain and now we will work into those back loops of this uh, slip stitches so this is the top loop and then into the back you can see those two loops and we will work slip stitches um, into them so if you see uh, look at the first row you have a small v that is laying on the front of the of our work and then it's another v another stitch that is in the back so we will need to work into that v from the back again keeping the stitches looser so it will be easier for you to work into those stitches and depending on how thick you want this edging to be i will repeat this row one more time so i will work three slip stitches rounds in total now again after finishing with the last stitch 
we will join into that first chain. Now again, chain one and then going into the back V and work the slip stitch. We will place a stitch marker into that first chain and then continue working into the back of the slip stitches but through both loops yeah so there are those v a little bit in the back and you need to work the slip stitches there and i think my edging is thick enough and this will be the last round so this is how the edge is looking and now we can move to the collar and work the edging of the collar as well um, normally the next section to start with will be the sleeves but so i wanted to work this. the collar because i want to see um to see it nice and neat as well for the collar i chose the same edging in uh, slip stitches here i have the beginning and the end of the first single crochet round that i made which they are separated, they are not joined. So I will do that right now. And uh, first, because uh, if I will work the slip stitches into that foundation chain, it won't look um, nice. And I will work one more row in single crochet. So we will work one single crochet into each stitch around for this third, first round of the neckline edging. And then after finishing the first single crochet round, we need those uh, Vs of the stitches so that we have this nice uh, slip stitches edging. So now the same, we will start with one chain placing a stitch marker into that one chain and then continue and slip stitch all around and I will do the same the same three rounds in slip stitches and here is how the collar is looking right now nice and neat and we can move forward to the sleeves of course, if you prefer to keep this uh, uh, blouse as a t-shirt, you can now work maybe just the same edging as the collar and uh, bottom. But I will work a 3-4 sleeve for this blouse. So I'm rejoining the yarn into the middle of the armpit chain. And we will start our sleeves from there. The first round will be in double crochet. I'm starting with the same two single crochet, one on top of the other. It's a bit difficult when you're starting the first stitch, but let's see. Now we will continue with one double crochet until we get on top of that um, uh, separating round from the body. We have their uh, side row that we need to work on top of it in order to avoid any gaps. I don't want to add more than one stitch there because I want to keep an even number of stitches but if, if in case you don't have an even number of stitches it's okay because you can start the cross stitch round with a double crochet and have that double crochet in the middle of the sleeve it won't be that visible 
So now I am at the side row. And here I will work a double crochet together because I don't want to add more than, uh, than one stitch here. So I'm making one, two on the top of that side row and on the bottom. And I will go also into that uh, stitch over there that is basically the stitch from the back panel because otherwise it will be too far the next stitch that I will need to work and it will create a gap. Now I will work the sleeve stitches in double crochet and then into the next uh, the other corner the next uh, side row that we have at the other corner we will do the same so here i'm doing again into that stitch of the body and then into the side row double crochet bottom of the side row and we will close that stitch and now we will continue to work into the armpit stitches to finish the round. And at the end of the round, we will close the round with the same invisible slip stitch. We're starting to work our stitch pattern in the same way as we did on the yoke, on the body, by alternating that one double crochet round with a cross stitch round. And of course you will um, alternate these two rounds um, until you reach the desired length of the sleeve. I started from the second stitch and now I'm turning into that first stitch and then continue with the cross stitch pattern. I work in total for the sleeve 21 uh, rounds but again you can work as many rounds as you wish until reaching the desired length of the sleeve. Here when I have those three double crochet together, I will consider it as one single stitch. And we will continue to work like this to the desired length. So now I'm going into that first stitch and join this round. with the same invisible slip stitch and now I will start the round from the first stitch or from the second one and then we will continue to work on the length of our sleeve for as many rows as we need. Okay, I finished 21 uh, rows and uh, now I will uh, continue with the same edging as I did on the collar and on the bottom of the, of the sweater. So we will start with uh, that uh, slip stitch uh, round. This time uh, we won't do a first single crochet round because we have a double crochet round as the last round of our sleeve. And this round has those uh, V's on top of the stitches, so we will uh, get the desired look that we want. And now again, I started with a slip, with a chain, um, then a slip stitch, and I will place a stitch marker into that first chain stitch. And now we will continue to work slip stitches across, and then. We will repeat this um, slip stitch round and starting with the second one we will need to work those slip stitches uh, same into the back 
um, of that loops after finishing with all three around we will cut the yarn and of course that you will need to repeat the same pattern for the second sleeve and after finishing with the second sleeve you are done with the sweater we just need to weave in the ends and then the blouse is done i really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thank you so much for watching and see you next time bye